I couldn't read the paper too carefully, but um, I do love the, perhaps it's worth mentioning because it's rather provocative and I like that a bit where you you say, uh, <laughs> yeah, machine learning has a pseudoscience problem. And then you you bring up the, uh, well, you and the, the other other writers, Andrew and uh, uh, Biba, is it? Yeah. Uh, bring up the, yeah, yeah. Uh, they bring up the uh, idea of how there's a resurgence of uh, physiognomy uh, in in kind of these ML communities. So just if you could just humor me with that for a bit, just kind of uh, what what all that that's about. Why you claim you know machine learning has a pseudoscience problem, which I think you already kind of did outline quite quite in detail. But then this little little example you use on on physiognomy. Yeah, well, part of it is there's sort this sort of runaway idea that we can do science without theory that picks up steam in the mid-century and then with the rise of machine learning techniques and these being adopted widely it just becomes it becomes it gets bundled into this hype narrative about how these technologies work and then everyone sort of believes that these technologies are capable of extracting true knowledge of some natural system in virtue of having achieved high classifier accuracy on some natural data set, right? And what's actually happening is, is researchers are interpreting that pattern as having discovered precisely whatever their intuitive idea of what they were going to discover was beforehand. Because if they're not explicitly doing the theory, if they're not, if they're not explicitly theorizing, then they're implicitly theorizing, which means that they're effectively trying to con you into believing whatever their intuitions were at the start of the research procedure without effectively having furnished evidence of that besides having told you that they trained some model and there's some pattern in the data that satisfied some criteria, right, for success. But um, I think because of all these hype narratives surrounding machine learning, and again, not for substantive epistemic differences in how these statistical methods work, but rather for sociological reasons, you get a lot of bad, bad, bad science. Mm. So if I want to do a quantitative social science study and I'm in a sociology department or an economics department, my advisors won't let me do that until I've read up on the hundred years long history of scientists in my field having studied that exact problem, right? Machine learners, on the other hand, machine learners don't even read the history of their own work. Machine, like, it is it is not typical for someone in machine learning to have even a five years deep understanding of the history of their own field, right? Which is, there are of course exceptions, but the general rule is people in machine learning do not read. Yeah. And so, but you're talking, are you talking about more on the scientific side or do you just mean general, you know, commercial ML engineers? Practitioners, but right. also in academic. Academics. Okay. Setting, That's unfortunate. Right? Yeah. Um, and so when, when you go to apply ML, you know, everything that's submitted to IEEE or, or NeurIPS or what have you, um, ACM, you get just this glut of work of people applying the methods of ML, especially DL, to some problem that scientists have spent maybe hundreds of years working on. And there's no acknowledgement that what they're tackling what they're attempting to tackle is a scientific problem that some very specific field of you know molecular biomechanicists or what, whatever the field is right have been working on for hundreds of years um and then there's this attitude that well deep learning will solve the problem and i don't have to to pay my dues and, and read about the methods in this field and then the reviewing practices at 
well, you know, part, part of it's like we got rid of we got rid of traditional peer review in machine learning, which is like, was traditional peer review hopelessly broken? Yes. Did we introduce new problems by getting rid of it wholesale? Also, yes. Right. And so then you've got, you know, so there aren't standard journals in machine learning the way they are in biomechanics or biochemistry or socioeconomics or whatever right um you are submitting to the big name uh machine learning conferences but peer review there is it's i, I mean i have to say it's it's pretty radically in common i, I don't i don't know that i i don't think anyone who reviews for or submits to machine learning venues would would try to fight me on that. I mean, I think the consensus is that the peer review pro process for these venues is wildly Inst inadequate. Inadequate, yeah. So uh, and, when and it's because it's because when you apply machine learning, right, you're applying it to some domain. You're applying it to some domain where there is a vast history of people trying to solve some problem. And when you submit your little deep learning thing to IEEE and you're trying to tackle some problem in social science, they're not asking social scientists to review that. God, no. Right. They're asking other people who trained a, you know, a transformer to with with data of that shape. Right. But they're not they're not asking people who have the disciplinary knowledge to review the methods for what actually matters to 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 doing science right yeah 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 and, and when do you think this change well was this is this imminent to the the practice itself or or when do you think this change took place where the the peer reviewing method became a bit lax or inadequate, as, as you pointed out? Well, it, it was just sort of an organic thing, right? You have, on the one hand, I mean, it, it was never the case that, it was never the case that there were people applying machine learning as far as I'm aware, it was never the case that people were applying machine learning to some problem in biology and then submitting that to a bio journal. That's not the, I mean, occasionally that happens, right? But but that's that's not standard practice and I don't think it ever was. It was also not the case that there were kind of standard journals for, there were standard journals for stats, right? But there were never kind of standardized deep learning journals, right? There were, there were, computing or stats um conferences that got kind of that, that kind of evolved into ml specific conferences or new ml specific conferences emerged and like you know a lot of the main ones are actually they didn't start out as ml conferences and they evolved to be ml conferences um but also you have at the same time the emergence of preprinting servers and so as you you get you get the emergence of a new kind of like machine learning has been machine learning. The the methods we call machine learning have been around since like the eighties, right? Mm. You could trace it back earlier to to kind of proto machine learning methods. Those go back much. I mean, again, like uh, it was out of World War Two. It was out of the research at Los Alamos that that you got like MCMC sampling, right? like Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling, like Metropolis Hastings yeah. sampling. Oh, I, didn't, elements, I, didn't, right? like, I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 It goes back to like the, the early fifties, late forties, early fifties. So even before that's, that's kind of machine learning, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, machine learning as a, it's the early two thousands that machine learning kind of goes like, Hey, we're a scientific field. Or hey, we're an engineering discipline. Like we're we're a discipline now, right? Um, 
and it's at the same time that you're getting pre-printing servers as as the sort of way that that stuff is disseminated so there's there's effectively there's no incentive to start journals and there's incentive against starting journals I would say this is my I'm making this up on the spot but that's kind of how I would reconstruct that history no, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's partially contingent. It's just historically how, how things have yeah, been. And also there's this widespread recognition that there's something deeply broken about traditional peer review, which is true. Yeah. Which virtually, I believe all, every academic I've spoken to has said that. So unequivocally, I think it's just a general consensus. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent.